The more you hunt sheep, the more you struggle, the more you hurt, the more difficult you think it is, the more you long to return, the more it calls to you. Here we go again, baby. back, hopefully part two with Alaska Joe, Joe Latard, Alaska Wilderness Enterprises. Day before the season, caribou, maybe some doll sheep hunting. And we picked up a, a nice bull a couple days ago near the cabin and then this better bull today. And uh, so I'm at the cabin, now we're about a mile, mile and a quarter from the cabin, we picked him up again and he might be a good shooter for tomorrow. So keep poking around and uh, give him some thought. Back in Alaska with Joe Latart and Wilderness Enterprises. Morning objective is to find Curly, a beautiful old caribou bull we found on the hill last night, about a mile and a half upriver behind us. Wish us luck, we're going in. Good morning from Alaska, it's day two here of our hunt. We've been scouting for a couple days before the hunt started, and this morning our camera operator, Jeff, picked up a bull about two miles out in the same neighborhood we saw Curly. So we're gonna spend some time here on the glass. We're gonna go up the hill and check it out. If it's not Curly, we're probably gonna let him walk. So stay tuned, let's see what happens. Yeah, I, just, I just got a great look at him, that's not Curly. His last point doesn't curl in like Curly's does. And it's split, isn't it?
started running right at us from probably about 800 yards to about 300 yards. We got to a lofty perch where we might be able to look down on them and get a range on them. And he got out to about 700 yards, still moving, got out to about 1,000 yards, still moving. And then he hooked it up the drainage. The Best of the West is brought to you by The Wild Sheep Foundation, Gunbroker.com, Cryptech, Camo, The Best of the West Shooting Systems, Defiance Custom Actions, Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, Huskama Optics, and LongRangeStore.com. After passing on those bulls the first few days, Joe had to return home, but my videographer Jeff is also a licensed guide in Alaska, and Joe had suggested with strong encouragement that we spike in for three or four nights, about five, six miles upriver, in search of some rams that some other hunters coming out had said they had seen earlier in the week. So there we went. I probably had a 40 to 60 pound pack, Jeff probably had 50 to 70 pounds, and here we go, more water crossings. So we're on like day five or six and in and out of the weather, about three quarters of a mile from Camp Up River and there's two rams, one, maybe two of them are shooter. They're half a mile, 40 degree angle up. And we've got a big caribou, nice tops, great shovel, not the biggest bezes, but this late into the hunt, he's very huntable. So we're gonna make a stock on this caribou bull first and then see if we can get a Huskamon advantage on any of these sheep. yards 650 yards feeding our way got good wind here nice bull Been hunting hard I think we're gonna try and get another 50 60 yards here and see if he'll feed down to us try and put one of those horned ELDX's right in the boiler room for a shot if it all works out. Just need to get that good prone position for these long range shots. That's the most important thing you can do. Get the wind and get prone. right back after the break with the best of the West. For more information about the products and gear used in today's show, please visit longrangestore.com or call 1-866-754-7618. To book your Alaskan adventure and for more information about Alaska Wilderness Enterprises, please contact Joe at 907-488-7517 or visit online at wildernessenterprises.com.
11. 510. Range is confirmed. Kissed that bolt and I said, This one's for you, Rebecca. It's hard hunting in Alaska when you're desert rad, and oh man, the motion's best of the West, Tuscoma Optics. Oh, this is the 35th animal with this system. I just can't thank everybody enough. I've always wanted a caribou, a bearing ground caribou in Alaska. I don't know even what day we're on. We're cold, we're wet, it's been hot, and then it'll rain and be cold again. 500 yards and I didn't even get to see him drop but her camera operator Jesse just thumped him dropped him so thank the good lord so blessed Joe Tart Last Golden Enterprise is the real deal I mean there's game all around us we had to pick between these sheep and this and this uh, caribou those sheep aren't going anywhere so caribou down can't wait to see the footage best of west 300 wind mag those Hornet DLDX, one and done, baby. This is the real Alaska right here. Set the darkness on fire when you smile. Pale blue innocent eyes like a child. I don't see any movement on him. I think we got our bull. We're going to approach him carefully just to be sure. Ours. He's got a double shovel, doesn't he? Wow, we uh, this is really cool. Is velvet was just starting to shed, but what really happened was he got in these bushes and rubbed part of the tips off, so it's real bright red. He's beautiful. I think he actually has the start of a double shovel. Good bezes on the right side, cool tops, just a cool bull. Uh, what an awesome deal here in Alaska, Wilderness Enterprise of Joe Tart. Best OS 300 win, 511 yards, one and done. An awesome system. We had to make a, a adjustment for wind, but elevation and temperature were right in line with the turret, the way we set the data. It just goes to prove you can't fool science. So if you get us the data or have one of our gunsmiths get the data for you, even a guy like me can look like he knows what he's doing. That's the best of the West. Well, there they are, perched on their lofty peaks, as Fred Berry used to say. And today they look down on us in this 31-point caribou. I don't even know if that's how you score them, but that's what I counted, and we're having a great time here in Alaska, Wilderness Enterprises. We picked up this bull in the river bottom this morning, and uh, he was about 1,100 yards away. We closed uh, most of that distance and ended up making a 511-yard shot. Just an awesome bull. So proud of the effort we put in here as a team, and now we got to figure out how to get this guy six miles downriver back to camp. Good problem to have here in Alaska, and maybe, just maybe, we'll get to go look at those rams before it's all said and done. So we are back at camp. We've got our first load of edible meat back at camp. We still got the head and hide to get in the morning, but we are going to have some caribou back straps, Steve Ernelli style. We've got some pepperonis we're going to put on the fire. We got a nice rock, good and hot here. 
We don't have anything out here. We're five miles from camp, so we're actually using pepperonis, and it's working perfect. We're frying these pepperonis up. You can see the grease trail I'm making here. And then I'm just going to butterfly some backstrap, a little bit of tenderloin here tonight, and we're going to put it right on that hot rock. Get a nice cut, put a little butterfly in it. Oh, yeah. This is going to be good. Ugh. Put it right on those pepperonis. Now you're living the Alaska dream. I'm gonna flip this guy. Oh yeah. Here we go, right back on that pepperoni grease. Got another back strap working right there. Let's cook up another one. Holy cow. That was really good. I mean, no kidding. The Best of the West is brought to you by The Wild Sheep Foundation, Gunbroker.com, Cryptech, Camo, The Best of the West Shooting Systems, Defiance Custom Actions, Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, Huskama Optics, and LongRangeStore.com. giant caribou now taken care of but still hadn't found that ram we wanted we glassed them up from camp that was the good news they were rams the bad news we could not judge from the distance that they were whether they were legal rams or not so the next step was to make one step closer we got out to the river drainage and again confirmed four rams in the group but still unable to determine whether they were legal we continued to leapfrog down the river until we decided there was only one choice. And that was to go from the very bottom of the riverbed to the very top of the mountain where those rams had bedded for the day. What do we got to lose? Let's go take a look. And once again, we're up the mountain. Left, right, left, right, about five, five and a half hours. And I will tell you once I got to the top, all the pain and struggles we went through, or at least I went through going up that hill, were immediately validated as worthy. Unfortunately, the rams weren't there, but we had a good idea where they might be. It had been really windy on that side and thought just maybe they'd be on the other side. We snuck down a little ridge, Will peeked over, using lambs. We knew we were in the right spot where that herd would be, and it actually started snowing at about this time. We stood up, grabbed our gear, started making our way around the hill to where the wind would just be perfect, and there they were, bedded down in all their glory. We got a great but brief look at them, long enough to know that they weren't legal. And then they took off, and we got set up and did everything right for a long range shot should the opportunity present itself. No matter how long we looked at them, the rams that weren't legal when they were bedded down didn't become legal as they went away. There's something special about the doll ram. There's something special about all sheep hunting. But that mental component, when you tie it all in and realize, geez, even a guy like me can get up a mountain like that and enjoy it and have a good time, just really proves that the mental aspect of Alaska big game hunting and sheep hunting in the mountains is just as important as the physical aspect. And I really appreciated Will and Jeff encouragement going up there, and I don't regret it. Even though those rams weren't legal, I would do it again tomorrow. I've been guiding for 37 years. I started out in the Brooks Range and ended up here in the Alaska Range for doll sheep. Doll sheep is a very special form of hunting. What you should expect when you come to Alaska is pristine environment and good sheep populations. That's what we have right now. But it's not a slam dunk. It's not a go out and mail order thing where you walk up and we have the sheep around the corner for you. It's a lot of hard work. In some ways, I guess you could say this was part two of my doll ram hunt. 
And while I know I'm not the first hunter to go without a doll ram two hunts in a row, it's not my last hunt for sheep. The more you hunt sheep, the more you struggle, the more you hurt, the more difficult you think it is, the more you long to return, the more it calls to you. So if you've ever thought about doing a sheep hunt, but weren't sure if you had the mental or physical aptitude to do it, trust me when I say you do. The next step is to call Joe Latart at Alaska Wilderness Enterprises and talk candidly about your expectations for a hunt. Anybody can kill a sheep. Right place, right time, right equipment. If you've thought about it and you've been putting it off, this is a great time to hunt Alaska. Get out there and hunt with Joe Latart in Alaska Wilderness Enterprises.